Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And we're at the traditional home of Dan's Model Works, the regular clutter zone as opposed to the main workshop, which is always struggling to be Big Daddy clutter zone. So we're working on the Sabre Jet, the F86D, sometimes known as Sabre Dog. And this is part four of this series. And if you see if you've seen the previous episodes, you'll know that this is an interesting kit. Basically, they've tried to make everything move and everything come apart and everything like that. So it's pretty cool in that respect. And the fit has been, I would say, better than a lot of kits, but it still has some serious problems that we're going to see. So let's just put the camera on the stand here. Get rid of the box. As you can see, I've done nothing. Actually, I've done quite a bit between episodes, just kind of fitting it in as I've been working on the uh, the Dodge Wrecker. So one conundrum that I uh, basically discovered near the end of the last episode that I didn't mention is, is if you look up in these landing gear bays here, you can see they don't really have, I try to give you a good view, they don't really have a roof. And I think the intention is, is as you look up inside there, you're supposed to see the engine. Now, I don't know how accurate that is. I would imagine that probably in the real plane, you can see what probably the, the underside of a duct that the air in, or that the engine sits in or something like that. At any rate, I'll pop it in there and you can see what it should look like. So I do have the engine glued together and it's supposed to pop in like this, something like that. So as you look up inside those wheel wells, the intention is, is that you should see the engine. Ah, I don't know how accurate that's supposed to be, but you know what? I think it actually looks pretty cool. So, I've already stated my intention is, is to have the engine sitting on the cart, which is kind of a cool idea as well. And they give you a cart, so I don't even have to build that. So the problem is, is now we're going to have this totally empty pocket in here. So, if you're a longtime watcher of Dan's Model Works, and if so, you really need to find a better way of using your time than this. What I did, in, in this engine, actually, you've got the nose piece right here, and then you've got this chunk, or sorry, this chunk here, then this chunk, and then you've got the, the, the tailpipe right here. All right, so it actually comes in uh, seven different pieces. So, of course, you know where this is going. Here's a mold. I made of the various pieces. There's the air inlet and there's the, the two parts with the combustor cans on them. And then this is the, the front compressor section there. And if I got that wrong, don't bother correcting me. And of course, here is our tailpipe. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to cast the entire engine in resin, but I'm going to basically cast this chunk right here so that I've got something to slip up inside that area. And I also realized that, of course, we won't have a tailpipe in our engine here. So I created this mold right there off of, you know, focusing would be nice. There we go. Off of this. So... We'll see how this turns out. So this way, at least I have a tailpipe without having to resort to, I don't know, the cap off of a glue bottle. And of course, I'll also have part of the engine stick inside here so we can see that from underneath. Something I should have been beavering away at for the last uh, week while I was working on the, the Dodge Wrecker, as I should have really been sloshing some filler into this gap right here and I would have had that all sanded and done but that would have required 
a little bit more forethought than I'm capable of showing. So we've got our tailpipe cast, and this is as long as it needs to be. Just enough to that you've got a decent shaped cylinder. A little bit of blue you see there is a tiny bit of uh, Play-Doh that I used to stop up the actual tailpipe before I put the resin in, and that shouldn't cause any problems. And there is our resin tailpipe in place. Not glued in place, but you can see basically what it's going to look like. Of course, it will be painted jet exhaust and um, black in the middle, just basically to turn it into a black hole. But the original engine itself, not like there's anything in there either. So, so we've solved this little problem. And then, so I ended up having to cast two chunks of engine. And when I glued them together, they... <laughs> I managed to get them crooked, but we're not going to see this part. This part is just basically there um, to, to hold this in place when I put it inside. And I didn't bother with the matching segments because they're going to be up the top. Nobody's going to see them. And we're adding weight to the rear of the plane, which isn't necessarily a good thing. I did put a lot of lead weights in the nose, but I don't want to overwhelm that. So... If we slide this back in again here, there, you can see the engine up inside where we want it to be. And next step is going to be, as you can see, I've started filling this. I still need to do a little bit. I'm going to paint all the inside here uh, zinc chromate, which probably isn't the right color, but it's... Uh, it is plausible for the time period. I know that some of the original Sabre Jets did still have zinc chromate primer inside there. And I like the look of it. So that's what we're going to do. So about a week has gone by since the last time I filmed or did anything. Um, it was a rough week. I finally started vacation a few days ago. Took a trip up to Ottawa with one of my kids as their uh, birthday present. So I have got the inside of this painted zinc chromate. It's actually a little bit darker shade, but I think that's fine. You can see there's the engine up inside there. Gave it a coat of steel. Now if we look here, you can see that I've actually amputated probably about a quarter of an inch of that casting, just because we really don't need that weight in there and nobody's ever going to see it. So our... Um, We've got our, our tailpipe in here. And if we flip it back over again, you can see that I've puttied over the big gap there. Now, something that was definitely annoying is you can see that these two air inlets on either side here are a separate piece that's supposed to set in. And of course, that didn't fit very well. They actually wanted to sink way deep into the fuselage. So what I did is I packed it out with a little bit of styrene on each side. And I'm going to have to do a little bit of filling to hopefully camouflage that. But I wanted to get the engine in and done so that I can glue our tail on and I can do something about this gap here. And remember, I'm not trying to make this gap disappear. So I'm basically just going to be uh, putting a few coats of white glue on to reduce the, uh, the extent of it. So instead of it being a, a deep canyon, it's just going to be a little bit of a line there. The tail section has been glued on. And if you look carefully, you should see there's kind of a whitish line in that great grungy seam I've been talking about. And what that is, is I've just basically squeezed some white glue in there. And then before it was anywhere near being dry, I just wiped it off with a finger. And I might, not have, to, I might have to do a second application, but what that'll end up doing is it'll turn that 
giant canyon into just a little bit of a of a depression which will turn it into a normal sort of a of a panel line and if you look at the underside of the wing this is the second application of white glue into the front of the slats and they're no longer anywhere near as deep as they were now they still look a little bit worse because of course white glue is transparent when it dries but you can see there it is there and that's a good trick because usually if you use some sort of a filler then you've completely wiped out the detail if you just simply want to make it less noticeable the white glue method works pretty good and it also works good in a place where you know you're not going to be able to sand such as the wing root here if you were to try to mash any sort of filler in there and then try to clean it up it would be almost impossible if you put a little bit of white glue in there wipe it out with your finger so you can see there's still just one little bit there that still needs to be filled and one little bit on this side now as you can see here i've put the basically the bottom of the rocket launcher hatch in place here now, the kit comes with a Rube Goldberg device, basically that. And I think the idea is you're supposed to be able to pop it up and down, just like everything else in this kit. And somewhere, here we go. This is what the front and the rear of the, uh, the rocket launching thing looks like doesn't have nearly enough holes and it's pretty horrid looking and focus I suppose I could have created a new part but I just didn't feel like it so I installed the hatch in the closed position and that's the way I'm going with it so right now I'm working on putting the air brakes on and I'm gonna have those in the closed position as well Mostly because there's not really any detail in behind. You see that? No detail. And I'm getting close to being able to put a little bit of uh, gray primer on my various seams and things that I've been slowly filling up with white glue. So we'll see how those are going to turn out. So I've got the port air brake on. You can see I've had to put a little shim of plastic to fill the gap because when you have the air very closed you end up with a gap at the bottom of it and the other side you can see the the plastic shim on it now it still needs to be trimmed before I can install it so there's an important step done which is painting all of the seams that you'll either want to eliminate or cut down the obviousness. Obviousnessness? The obviousness. Any seam that you want to be less obvious, that's the way to say it, um, you really need to, you can't just judge it based on the plastic. If you really got to put some sort of gray on it, neutral gray is what I usually use. So you can see we've got our join here where the front and rear fuselage come apart to get at the engine. Now, if you remember, that was a pretty huge gap. And now it just looks like it's a, it's a line. Basically looks like a seam like anything else on the plane that's supposed to be there. Now, you may recall there was a giant hole back here that's been filled in. And all of our, all of our control surfaces after oh, at least two, possibly three uh, coats of white glue are far less deep and obvious than they were. I mean, you still need to see them, which is why you can't use putty. And if we look along the wing root, you can't see any gap or anything there. The only thing I'm not happy with, this side I'm happy with here. This is where this part got set in. If we go to the other side, you can see there's still a line there. So I'm going to have to kind of scrape that down to make that a little less obvious. 
And about the only flying surface I want to still work on is the rudder. It still looks awfully deep. As a matter of fact, it's you can see my fingers through it. So, But we're getting close. Just got a phone call from my part-time job, and they said to me, we heard you're on vacation from the full-time job this week. Do you want to come in for an extra shift? And I basically said, mm, yeah, no, not going to happen. I'm having a hard enough time getting some sleep and getting caught up. So thanks, but no thanks. Right here is one of the areas I identified earlier as being a problem area, is the top of this duct where it blended into the fuselage, or rather, did not blend. You can see a significant seam there. Well, by scraping down with the knife blade, I managed to blend it in quite a bit better than it was. Probably not perfect, but it's good enough for me. As you can see, I've uh, put some neutral gray on just to see how things are blending in. The uh, air brakes are never going to be a perfect fit, but they're a whole lot better than they were. And I didn't put any neutral gray in the rudder, but I think it is obvious that it's not nearly as deep a join as it was. And once again, that was just simply by putting some white glue in there, wiping off the excess. So, you know what so means? So I start making excuses for not finishing this thing. It's pretty much 99% of the way ready for paint. Just a couple little things I got to do. Put the canopy on, mask that. Uh, the uh, landing gear base, I got to stuff some stuff in there. Just boring things. So the next episode is going to show paint. And I'm not going to promise it's going to be finished next time. Because we all know the glacial pace that I managed to build models at. So, at least we do have some progress. It doesn't look like much more than last time. Because, uh, obviously, the flying surfaces and things were already on last time. But we've filled in these gaps here. We've added the, uh, the air brakes. We've got the hatch for the... Mighty Mouse Rockets, and of course we have the engine in here. Let's not forget the engine. So, thanks for watching, and until next time, just keep on modeling.